there, podcast listener. I'm Allison. I'm Amanda. I'm Christopher. And I'm Matt. And this is What Scares Us, a podcast where four friends share the movies that freak us out and make us reflect on the human tendency to make a bad situation much, much worse. (laughs) Brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library. Today's movie is When Evil Lurks from 2023, directed by Damien Rubna. Um, Have you guys seen this before? No. I had just seen it a couple months ago. This was the first time for me. This was a first full watch for me. I started to watch this movie back in October around spooky season, and I kind of gave up on it early because I was not in the right mood for a, what I thought was ju- going to be just a standard possession movie. Uh, mm-hmm. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when you told us that, I was so confused because I feel like a lot happens in this movie, but... I will say the beginning is a little slow. But yeah, you were like, I wasn't into it. It was a beautiful day. <laughs> it's like, oh. Okay. It was a beautiful day. And <laughs> seeing the dude in the bed, I was like, no. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need this. I could go get some sunshine or watch this big pussy guy. Yeah, watch, watch him ooze out of his mouth. And yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just, I, I. It didn't strike me right, and I think that it is a, a great disservice to any movie if you sit down to watch it in a bad mood. So I, I, I'm glad that I, I stopped and and gave it another chance this time. Good. Was this first watch for you too, Amanda? Yep, I never heard of it, and I watched it once. And yep, I think I watched it because there was a lot of hype when it came out on Shutter. I think it may have come out in Argentina earlier, but. Um, yeah, I really like this movie. I think there's a lot there that's really good. I don't think it's perfect, but um, dang, it goes hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you nasty when evil lurks. <laughs> <laughs> and the nasty bits were what was keeping me in. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to spoil everything about this movie. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. We have it right here at the library. And then come join us again. Um, So, the movie opens with Pedro and Jaime waking up to gunfire in the middle of the night. The next day, they find the lower half of a body, which leads them to Maria Elena's house. She explains that she hired the cleaner to kill her son, Uriel. The police claim that they don't know anything about it and refuse to help, and Pedro, Jaime, and Ruiz attempt to transport Uriel as far away as they can. Well, right away... I really like this dreary, sad feeling of the movie. To me, it kind of felt like it follows. Mm -hmm. I know that is a reach, but in tone, it just felt sad, like something is really off here. And then there's that really unusual drone footage at the beginning, looking down where they're just about to enter the woods. I thought it was a really interesting beginning. I didn't think it was slow at all. It was confusing, and mm-hmm. the story dumps you right into the middle of the action with no backstory, and I like that too. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And the first, I don't remember if it's the first thing that we see, but like really early on before those drone shots, there's that really long tracking shot around their house that I, since I was paying closer attention to it this time instead of my first watch, I was immediately taken with how good this movie looks. It mm-hmm. looks really good, and and I'm assuming that it had a pretty small budget. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I this movie's disgusting. <laughs> I couldn't, I I and I'm not squeamish like at all. I'm not <laughs> usually phased by this movie. Like in some spots, really got to me, and there were some really surprising things. And in this first section, I love how much of it is practical how mm-hmm. much of it is clearly makeup mm-hmm. like that that like severed body that the dog of course is kind of gnawing at and like that all looked so good and whatever the hell the like the spirit telescope thing or whatever <laughs> that, that they that they found the pieces for like i didn't know what the hell that was but i thought it was really cool and mm-hmm. i wanted to know what it was um the other thing that that they set up really early in this is that there's they keep saying that God is dead and that the church has all died. What? I don't know. Like I, that is such a strange thing to hear repeated over and over again. And I love that. That's a really bold choice. Um, 
especially because yeah. Pedro's like pissed about it. He's like, don't talk about the saints. I think that's so interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially for like this possession. And again, you don't get that backstory. You don't know. And there he's possessed. They keep calling him a rotten. And you're like trying to get the dialogue and like, what's going on? Why is he rotten? I totally didn't understand the weird telescope instrument stuff that was supposed to be, what do they call him? Um, a catcher? Cleaner. A cleaner. A cleaner, yeah. a cleaner was supposed to come. So they all know that this is like a thing that happened. So they knew exactly what somebody had gone to clean a person. And then they got there and found that person. But what's interesting is you do know that this has happened before or everybody is aware of this happening because before they drive him away, like the guys have their guns out. The mom is like, don't kill him. It has to be done by a professional. She a Ghostbuster. We have to. <laughs> we she, have. Yeah, she knew her son. Her son is the one that's lying in the bed, Uriel, and she's. You can't just kill him with a gun. You've got it. It has to be done by a professional. So whatever these this cleaner does with those weird instruments. Yeah, she says we've got to keep him alive mm -hmm. for the cleaner. And I'm already thinking, wait, you got to keep him alive to kill him. Mm -hmm. So there's something weird going so on. So the cleaner yeah. has to do it. So that's why they decided. They were figuring out the distance, and they decided if they drove him and dropped him off in the middle of nowhere, farther or far enough away, it would be somebody else's problem down the road and not <laughs> theirs. That's and, never a good idea, yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. And I love the gross bits of them trying to—and he's like a—he's a larger man. He's trapped in this bed, this thing, and they have to move him from the bed to the car, to a pickup truck, and they're dragging him on a sheet. It goes so And I'm badly. like, of course he's going to fall at the bottom, and his guts are going to splatter everywhere. Oh. It's so—I love how gross and squishy it was, mm -hmm. because honestly, I wasn't super into this movie, but the parts that drew me in when I was kind of bored with not knowing what was going on, or just kind of like the quietness and the stillness, was like— when all of a sudden there was some blood and guts on the screen, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> and so I like that we are introduced to this, like, really disgusting, like, creature. And then, like, it just continues to, like, blood spat and, like, the yellow pus hanging out of the truck and stuff. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, I like the the gushiness kept me in because if it didn't have it, this movie would would have been even worse for me. The scene where uh, Marie and Elena says that... Um, they have to kill Uriel. That's like what got me. So mm -hmm. she seems so like not calm, but like so straightforward. Like, yeah, we've got to kill him. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? Why would you need to kill your own son? And like that really was like the hook that got me into this movie because I wasn't quite sure about it at first. To me, it felt slow at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So all that really slow. happens is you hear a gunshot and then the two guys are like, hmm, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Let's check it out tomorrow. Yeah, my car those two guys. <laughs> that was a, yeah. Why tomorrow? I mean, and that that stuff actually kind of reminded me of like the rules in like westerns. Mm -hmm. And really, both of these guys, whenever they're together, it kind of reminded me of old spaghetti westerns, mm -hmm. which I really liked, um, and some pieces of the score. Um, this the whole first act, the first half hour, first forty minutes, like. I wouldn't even say that they're slow. I was pretty drawn in, especially when they're trying to move his big, weird body. They're flopping him all around. Oh, and they're, like, showing <laughs> you underneath the sheet, like, like <clears throat> what I'm guessing is shit seeping yep. out. And, like, oh, God. <laughs> and then it's all over the truck, like, all over the truck. How is it all over it like that? But – and I've – I didn't take any um, physical notes in this, but, so, but stuff that I thought about is you can, like, almost smell this movie mm -hmm. in a weird way. Because mm -hmm. they, like, the visuals are so grisly. And, like, the they even say multiple times, like, oh, what a smell that is. Mm -hmm. Like, as mm -hmm. they're multiple times getting rid of clothes. And uh, anyway, yeah. this movie is disgusting. It smells yeah. in a way that I love. <laughs> smelling rotten. Like yes. they call them the rotten. Yes. Um, one thing you mentioned, Matt, was um, with some of the overhead shots at the beginning. I made a note of that. Be I wrote down color saturation. Mm -hmm. The color saturation in those shots, I was like, okay, this is actually filmed really lovely and mm -hmm. it looks good. Like it looks really good. Yeah. So I was impressed. Yes, definitely. So there was a scene when they were taking the body out and the younger brother looks down and I think he takes something. But I kept waiting for that to play a role later in the movie and maybe I missed it. Um, it we might get there. Was it a piece of the instruments? No. So I also was confused by that because there is a gun that he's looking at. On oh, the yeah. Chair. oh, yeah. Yeah. He picks up the gun. It took me like five watches for the last like six months to figure out what that's about. But there's a gun on the chair. And then later when Uriel's brother comes to ask to stay, he knows that he has a gun already because he saw it at the house. Right. 
And, and he, he says, took yeah, one I of the bullets, didn't he? Yep. And he, um, I think he's trying to, because um, the brother Jaime is immediately like super, like he's like, it's Ruiz, it's this guy, it's all these other people around us. But the movie starts with gunshots, so I'm think he's wondering. Is this the gun that we heard last night? I see. Oh, Got I didn't it. think about that, but I knew there I was a gun either. there and that yeah. the younger kid, Uriel's younger kid brother, was t- taking it. Interesting. Hmm. Um, this director, this is like his second sort of bigger movie. He's directed other stuff, but um, his first movie, Terrified, I would say is worth a watch, but it's not nearly as like um, put together as this movie. I would like there's two scenes in particular that I think are worth your watch, but the rest of it is like confusing in a way that isn't as satisfying as this one. But um, it's like a totally different thing. I don't know that these two movies are connected, but it's possible that they're in the same universe. Hmm. Just there's a couple little similarities, but one of those similarities is they also use those like weird brass instruments on the like it's sort of a haunted house movie, but. Uh, the thing that they're working on, they use the same sort of instruments. Yeah. Interesting. I like how it's so like abstract. Like you know, it's important, but you have no idea what it is. Or like it's because yeah. it's not real. Yeah. Well, we don't know. <laughs> Argentina is wild, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> With those magic astrolabes. <laughs> But yeah, another thing I just think is really interesting about this movie is um, I don't really like possession movies. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's like, oh, the kid is possessed. Get the priest, get the holy water, the power of Christ compels you. Like, you know what I mean? It's so Mm -hmm. formulaic. But here, it's like the things that you would ordinarily fall back on, the police, um, religion, they cannot help you. Mm -hmm. So, like, what are you going to do now? Yeah, this one, like, the rules of this are different. And I yeah. really and like I was pretty taken with that right away because mm-hmm. I it made me kind of stop trying to guess like okay when are we going to see a contortion scene mm-hmm. when are we going to see vomit when are we going to you know like the basically, basically stuff that always calls back to The Exorcist mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah it that that was another thing that kind of drew me in is that I didn't really know what was going to happen and I felt happy to let them take me on the ride instead of trying to figure it out Mm -hmm. which tells me that it must have looked pretty good i know because i am a busybody (laughs) and i I are serial guessers yes can't help it (laughs) and i was never right in this so i just stopped (laughs) because after a while you kind of gave up yeah i did like though that it was original and i do like a possession film even though they can be formulaic or whatever i do like a possession film which is weird i don't know why um but this one was different than your traditional ones that are like more commonly out there that I've seen mm-hmm. because you couldn't like this did have specific rules and there were seven rules of things. And I'm like, what does one, th- well, I don't understand. I still don't even, I don't understand like how the rotten spreads or how some people become possessed and some people don't like, why are the two main brothers not like, why was the dog like he was wearing those clothes, but he's not possessed, but he took off the clothes and the dog, I don't know. There, yeah. There I, were like weird inconsist in this, not like important to the plot, but mm-hmm. as someone who wants to figure it out, I'm still trying to figure out, like, I know the rules now. The grandma told us the rules. I'm still not quite. Yeah. Um, so I can't leave this section without commenting on the economics that we get in the background, right? Mm-hmm. We get the super, super rich landowner, Ruiz, mm-hmm. and we get the the poor family with um, uh, Maria Elena, mm-hmm. and she's saying that, or no, she, yeah, she's afraid to get kicked off the land, and these two brothers don't seem that uh, high off the hog either, mm-hmm. you know? So... I just love this contrast right away. And people are worried about getting kicked off the land. And, you know, the cops are there. They're, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any reason to say this, except they just seem kind of corrupt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, One of for them sure. straight up says that they're at the end of the world. Like, right. sorry, we're not going to do anything. It's, yeah. We're done. <laughs> well, right. we're apparently, <laughs> apparently the Uriel, the, the rotten person, he's been lying a bit for a year. Right. He's been. This person has been possessed and in bed with in the bed of his mother's home with his younger brother in it, and he's just been in this bed, and they've been taking care of him for a year, waiting for the cleaner. And she said she reported it to the police, and they never did anything. Right. That is some super mom power to be cleaning up his ass for a year, like Woof. with that. 
bucket of gross rags. Yeah. And he was completely oh, like yeah. bloated and deformed and pussy and oh. like. And their house is talk, small. Though. Their house yeah. is so small. It's like one half for this guy and one half for <laughs> yeah. the family to link. Ugh. Yeah. Um, I love the scene where Ruiz busts in with a gun and then he's like, oh my God, like, no. <laughs> I just think that's super well acted. And he, honestly, uh, Pedro has the same reaction where he's got his hands over his face and he's just like, what the f-? Yeah. Yeah. Both of these, both of those leads are, are quite good in this, I, I have to say. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, pretty impressed with both of them. Jaime is also in Terrified, which I didn't realize until I rewatched it over the weekend. Um, but that was fun too, because he's um, in a different role there, and he's maybe five years younger. He doesn't have like the facial hair. I don't know. He just looks a little different. Okay. Well, I do like that. And the two brothers, they were good together. And the movie is it's pretty quiet. There's a lot of meandering and mm-hmm. like going through emotions. And I think the two brothers together in their scenes together, and then independently, um, I didn't think they did a good job. Yeah. I think it was believable for sure. I also love that after flopping him into the back of the truck, they just flop him back out <laughs> accidentally. He falls out. He literally <laughs> they lost him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they ruin another blanket. Oh, yeah. They and and hit- another truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not driving that truck around after that. I know. No, it's straight up yellow. It's I like know. such, oh, it's like bile yellow. I also love that they almost hit that kid, and then one of them says the asshole was going to school. That's right. That asshole, yeah. <laughs> calls him an asshole. I know. <laughs> that kid is at the end of the yes, movie, too. Yes, I, it took me a second, but when I saw his bike. Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Oh, that was the that. kid on the bike? Yeah. And they, <laughs> he gets on the bike, he does a little fist shake at him yeah. like an old man. You jerks, you almost killed me. <laughs> Oh, okay. See, I didn't think that scene was scary whatsoever. There was something about it that didn't have any tension for me. With the at the bu- end? Uh, no, not not the end. The almost, almost hitting the kid. Yeah, almost hitting the kid. It seemed mm-hmm. was it was it tense for you guys? It's a, it was a little surprising, but not tense. I think it came and went so fast mm-hmm. before I even had a chance to get nervous about it or something. Yeah. For me, it was that fe- like you ever um, like you're driving. And you hit a pothole, and you look in the back, and you're like, "Shit, did I hit somebody?" It was that feeling for oh, me of okay. like, I know that I didn't, but like, yeah, that yeah. was yeah. a cat, yeah. was it yeah. a squirrel, or Becker? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wah, wah. oh no! <laughs> um, one thing though, when they're driving in the truck, they've got the rotten, the possessed body in the back, and then they almost hit that kid. They stop, they get out, and then they look in the bed of the truck, and the bed is empty. And they're like, oh, crap, the guy fell out. How far back do you think it was? And they, they <laughs> oh, say, crap. They say, how, well, in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They're like, ah, caca. Um, <laughs> um, so the, he's gone out of the truck, and then they're like, well, how far back do we, like, basically, did we drive far enough away where it's somebody else's problem? But what I don't understand is... They are going back the way they came. Why don't they check to see where he fell off along the way? They truly just like wipe their hands. They're like, sweet, we're done. It's good enough. <laughs> and like they weren't going down like winding roads. It seems like they're on like pretty it's straight like two lane like, highways where it's like they probably made yeah. like four turns. You could backtrack and find that. And, and like, it's not like you could miss him. <laughs> so those are the little things that like were to me i'm like hey that's not right but also yeah. it does not matter. it's not important right. well, like, but wait you're gonna drive back yeah. the same way just check right. for him he's also not in the shot when they show the kid and he's like yeah, i yes which is yeah. yeah i thought that was better than their original plan which is dump him in the stream oh yeah it's shallow enough he might not drown <laughs> uh everything about that was horrifying yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, that's just like the scene in Return of the Living Dead where they burn the corpses and you see the smokestack full of zombie smoke that just rains on everyone. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. You know? Right. So it seems like the some of the, the elders are the ones who understand the rules and the, how to deal with the possessed. Like, both of the women... Um, the mother of Uriel, the possessed, she seems to know, like, hey, it has to be done by a professional. You can't just shoot him. And then eventually the two brothers, the, we meet her, the grandma, their mother, their mother, and she's the one who breaks down all of these rules. Like, we're not at that point in the film yet, mm-hmm. but, like, they're the ones who seem to understand because the two brothers don't, 
I mean, they know it exists, though, because they knew that it was, they mentioned the cleaner, and they mentioned the, they saw the instruments and knew what they were. So I didn't quite, I didn't quite understand why they were still act like they didn't know how to deal with this guy. It. It's interesting to me because, like, it's so well known that there's a protocol for the town to turn off the lights and stuff later, but um, it almost feels like um, like a fairy tale or something, mm-hmm. where, like, it's like, yeah, like, I've heard those stories, like, I guess I would know what to do if, like, a fairy or, like, a leprechaun start, like, messing with me, but you and I mean, I'm not 100% sure on the rules, mm-hmm. or yeah. you and I mean, if there's a poltergeist, <laughs> it's like, I think I remember they do this, yeah. but that was the vibe I got. Because the grandma says, like, she she knows all the rules, but she's never heard of, like, she's never known someone who has seen a rotten before. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. seems pretty rare. Like a tale told over time. And even, like, later when we get towards the final um, scenes in the movie, there's yet another woman that we meet who knows more of the rules and how to deal with all of it. And she's the one with the instrument. She's got the stuff. Cleaner. So we have three very wise older women who are trying to keep everybody... In line. Pretty Obviously. much all the women in this are significantly smarter than yes. any dude that you see. I which, was just about to say that. Which tracks. <laughs> I love yeah. Pedro's ex-wife. She's just like, get out. <laughs> yeah, every woman in this. Yeah. Is, they all know what's going on. And yes. the men are not. <laughs> yeah, and then weirdly, all of the children are either like, like evil or eaten killed yeah. <laughs> it's ins- it's insane anyway th- yeah, this movie's nuts there is like i haven't quite been able to figure out what they're saying but yeah it is like adults versus kids in this movie because yeah. every single kid either dies gets possessed gets manipulated by somebody mm-hmm. like they're just little yeah, yeah i had some children of the corn vibes by the time we get to the end yes, for sure for sure There's- oh i was thinking yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. <laughs> Kids possessed, versus possessed adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're possessed in a way. <laughs> <laughs> There's even a line that says evil likes children and children like evil. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was great. That was great. Are we ready for the next section? Yes. Yep. Ruiz and his wife find out that one of their goats is possessed. Ru- Ruiz shoots it, but his wife immediately becomes possessed herself and kills them both. And then Uriel's brother asks to stay with Pedro and Jaime, but they only allow him to stay in the stables. This is one of my favorite parts. Shocking. Yeah. Like, yep. game on. <laughs> yep. Like, when he killed the goat, and then the pregnant woman sees her husband oh, kill God. the goat he kills the goat and then he kills himself and then she picks up the axe and whacks herself i was like yeah and like it doesn't matter if that would work or not because in my mind i'm like no fucking way could that could that work killing yourself with an axe but it, it looks so good yeah. the effect itself and the fact that it gets really sluggish right at the end and then she just kind of misses and dies and she's pregnant. Anyway, this movie's fucked up. I like. <laughs> I I can't believe something that I admire about this movie is how hard it goes. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't really hold back, and it shows you like. Unfortunately, it shows you multiple. I mean, they're not real animal deaths, but they sure look like it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the worst of that. I think yet, but like, <laughs> yeah, that goat, that goat thing was pretty wild. No, go ahead. But the setup is so well done yeah you see the goat and you see it take a step forward so its head is right up against good the goat gun. actor yeah, yeah. oh man try it's, me yeah i wanted to go bah! <laughs> well he does for a split second right right right, right. <laughs> i wanted there to be some dialogue between the two of them <laughs> I love that the couple can immediately tell which goat is evil. Like mm-hmm. until all the other ones leave, I'm like, I don't know. It's like I a couldn't bunch tell. Of goats. Yeah, yeah. Right. but both of them are like, oh, it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> and little horns appear over um, Ruiz's uh, head in that one shot. I thought that was pretty sweet. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's 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 like a blink and you'll miss it kind of thing. But um... the camera comes up behind his head as he's like holding the gun and you can see the goat's um, horns like perfectly aligned with his. I missed that, but that sounds awesome. It's pretty cool. So this reminded me a little bit of the scene of the the wild rabbit in The Witch where you're just staring at that rabbit's face and then you've got that goat too just staring you down. Man, yeah, both of those I think are so effective. 
Black Phillip. This is Black Phillip's cousin, <laughs> Brown Phillip. <laughs> Brown Phillip. He has the same name. But does he have, <laughs> does he have blue ears? They're like what? gray spots or something. Oh, on my oh. TV, it looked like he had... They look like gray with like a bunch of white spots. Uh-oh. But I can okay. see blue. Uh-oh. Look... We have a settings issue. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Do we need, need me to come over and balance your colors for you? <laughs> Great color saturation. Can Christopher's TV even handle that? No. <laughs> His TV is from 1997. Doesn't have. Doesn't give you that option. <laughs> you press the button and it literally displays across the bottom. You get what you get. <laughs> just says, no. Just shuts off. It's a crapshoot. Push the button. No, it is what it is. <laughs> um. Oh, also in that random scene, which I'm not really sure why it's there, but it's like all of them like having tea and stuff at their house. Um, there's another instance where um, you can see <coughs> the antlers, like the shadows moving behind the antlers yeah, that's because cool. they're using electricity. Oh, right. I, that one I did pick up on. Mm-hmm. Um, we also start learning the rules here. The one kid tells us the first rule, although no one listens to him. You can't <laughs> shoot it? Um, not to use electricity. Oh, electricity is the first one? Yeah, because it's shadows oh, call in the evil. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> when was electricity invented? The demons were so pissed that year. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, they're excited. Like, Hell yeah, shadows. <laughs> <laughs> well, fire would cause shadows too. Right. Like whatever layer. New shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pedro returns to his family to try and convince them to flee. He and his ex-wife Sabrina get into an argument and reveal that Pedro is violating a restraining order. The family dog Roger attacks Vicky and drags her away. Her father Leo follows them and kills the dog but gets immediately possessed and returns to kill Sabrina. And Pedro leaves with his sons. Oh, Roger. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I loved it, though, when he nod that kid's face unreal I, was, <laughs> I did not expect that and I, I knew the dog was I'm like well the girl's sitting right next to the dog I'm yeah. like the dog's gonna attack yeah. the kid but I did not expect a full on face lunge I didn't expect to see it and then drag it around the house and then drag it down the road I was like <laughs> I was cheering it on I wanted the grossness I wanted to see the nod off face which we didn't really see no I, yeah I was hoping but for that too I, again the gore scenes that were just gross and brutal just had me yeah it's funny though, as shocking and horrible as that was, I was more shocked when the car came back. Yeah, it didn't the car crashed? Yeah, right into the mom. Mm-hmm. Right, and the girl. Right, and, wasn't the girl there? Well, they found the little girl. The little girl right. comes back, and the mom's like, "Oh yeah, Vicky's okay. She's fine." And I'm like, "That's not Vicky. Vicky's got gnawed up." Right, which right. the mom didn't really know. Right, um, and then Vicky says. Daddy will come home and kill you. <laughs> she whispers that to the mom. The mom's like, oh, whatever. Dad's fine. Whatever. Oh, He's whatever. Right. She says this twice a yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and that's when he comes back with the truck and rams into right. the mom and the little girl. Yeah. yeah. And that was shocking, That was too. fantastic. That's just as shocking, maybe more shocking. Yeah. It's so yeah. fast. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you think, okay, he is going to come back, and it happens immediately. That's what I mean. This is all within the first half hour. And it, it like, so this was not dragging for me. I was pretty stoked on the movie at this point. <laughs> I wondered if you would like it once you got into it. Because to me, it reminds me of like um, Fulci, like the yeah. sort of like gore, like hyper violent stuff. There's no stuff eyeball and... stuff in particular. But <laughs> no, but it just has that vibe to me. I, yes, I can, I can see that. And it, it, does basically and before they even get to Sabrina's house like it felt there were a lot of western feeling things about it to me that I really liked um mm-hmm. it also yeah Fulci and then it follows it's that same like mm-hmm. something's coming you can't stop it nothing you do is gonna work like good luck yeah. <laughs> it's bleak but also you've got multiple <laughs> family members trying to protect their family and the and Pedro is trying to get his brother and then he's in the house so he has um two sons in there that he's trying to now get out of that mm-hmm. house and one of them we find out is autistic mm-hmm. so he's trying to get those two out of the house to get away just so stressful because his oldest uh, has autism and the youngest is so little and not a very good actor <laughs> <laughs> and he just saw his sister's <laughs> face get ripped off yeah and isn't as upset as he should be probably but well it's not his kid <laughs> i guess that's true <laughs> 
Um, I love how he just barges into the house, like says whatever he needs to to get in, and then strips naked. Strips naked. Whew. Yeah, yep. and the wife That's is not having it. No, of course not. Yeah. Like, once you understand their backstory, it's like, of course she's like, get out right now. No, yeah. we're not listening to this. But then as a, a, wa- a viewer, you also know, like, no, he needs to be there. He's got to, ta- you guys have to get out of town. Like, there's, s- stuff's happening. Right. But to them, he's just yeah. crazy. He's the dad with the restraining order. Yeah. Who's naked in the living and room. now he's naked. <laughs> <laughs> the little boy comes in, what? And the mom, like, covers <laughs> <laughs> his face. <laughs> the little girl comes in. Yeah. Right. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we learn here that he left four years ago and hasn't financially supported his family oh since. Oh, my God. Wow, 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 wow. Dudes rock. He's too busy hunting with his brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we're starting to get this this queasy sense that it could be the end of the world. Mm-hmm. But maybe not. It's kind of hard to say because the end of the world only seems to be affecting this one pocket. Maybe. Or maybe not. I mean... Everyone seems to know these these rules of the rotten. There's a whole established governmental program to send cleaners everywhere. But everything is so lonely. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. town is lonely. You know, there are, I don't think we ever see any neighbors coming out. You know, we break ma, grandma out of the home or something. <laughs> There's nobody there. That just seems to happen easily. Yeah. So it's it's this really lonely, sad, end of the world feeling. It's a bad world that yeah, they all live in. Right. And, and they all seem to be okay with it in some weird, I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they all at least seem resigned to it at least. So. Right. And there's no like... A team meeting where the family sits and says, hey, this is what's happening. Yes, you just saw your sister get her face not off. Stuff's happening right now. We need to get out of town. The evil's coming. There's no, like, this is the plan. Everyone's just kind of like, I don't know. It was just very <laughs> dis- disarming to me. I'm like, why can't they just, like, how do you explain what's happening? Yeah. But I also don't think that Pedro has the words to explain. And his mom knows what's going on. Like, once they get the grandma, like, she knows what's going on. Yeah. But um, he even says, actually, right after they get her, like, outside of the car, he's like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, which the viewer can very easily relate to. There's a couple interesting lines there. The grandma also asks, like, oh, the boys, aren't they supposed to be in school? It's like, hmm. Yeah. Why is school coming up again? I, I don't know. Well, school comes Grandma into questions. play later. <laughs> well, school comes into play. Well, and I forgot too because I forgot the ex-wife calls him on the phone and he knows that she's dead, and he picks up the phone and I never that's when he loses it. Up. Why did he answer the phone? I Wasn't that Gam Gam's phone too? And they just smash the shit out of it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he talks yeah. to his dead ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. Pick it up. Got to see what she has got to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. But apparently the uh, the the demon entity does not have um like a tracker and can't track her phone. <laughs> I, that's I, not in the list of rules. I but. did like that conversation because he's actually engaging with her as if that was his real ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's arguing back and he's getting so upset. And then later he just totally admits, yeah, that wasn't her. She's yeah. dead. That's one thing I love about this movie is like they never make the quote unquote right decision. But also that's like not how people work Mm -hmm. ever like even with the best intentions like as we all learned in the past what four years like you can give people a very simple set of rules and they are not going to follow them Mm -hmm. like that's just how people are especially too with like the like you said christopher like everybody is so isolated they have their their properties their small houses or their big houses like if they're farmers and hunters and like rearing animals um the school is very small so it's yeah it's a weird feeling. Yeah. The big inspiration for this movie is, um, I guess, what is it? Monsanto dumps a crap ton of glyphosate. Is that what it's called? Hmm. They pour a Roundup all over Argentina. Oh, and yeah. so there's tons of people who have all kinds of like birth defects, cancer. Like It's just like poisoning everyone and like every part of the mm. natural environment. And so that was like the director's inspiration for this is like... Everybody knows it's bad. They still keep dumping it because they're making money. The police doesn't care because they're getting kickbacks. Like, we know that this is killing people, but, like, human apathy still exists, and there's, like, nothing to do about it because nobody here has any money to fight it. 
I, I know I say this every episode probably, but here again, horror movies are exploring some kind of social issue. And it's so easy to overlook a horror movie. It's like, oh, why would you watch a movie about a slasher or mm -hmm. a, the rotten? It's like there's almost always something deeper going on. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing I love about horror movies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, I also love that Pedro bribes his kids with ice cream to find the car keys. <laughs> There's a lot of ice cream. Apple yeah. ice cream, no <laughs> less. That sounds awesome. I've never had that apple ice cream. <laughs> sure would like you to, to get you some. Hmm, I need the car keys. I wonder if anybody knows where the car keys are. <laughs> I'm going to try that tonight. <laughs> some parent trickery. I, like, I appreciated that. Um, but yeah, then they. I liked finding out the rules. Like Grandma's just sitting in the back seat with the boys trying to figure out what's going on. The one kid's just making all kinds of noises. And she's just like very spookily going over, telling the younger kid, she's like rubbing his hair, telling him all these rules of this evil being that they're trying to escape. And Singing the, that kick ass song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paige was just like, what? Stop. <laughs> she's like, there's Asriel. Oh, there's. God, that was such a funny <laughs> I forgot about that song. That song with these horrendous lyrics. It's yeah, like a death take metal your song. Body. There yeah. <laughs> you know that old number? Yeah. God, yeah. How about that? But that's what I mean. Like, I, I feel like everyone sort of kind of knows about it, but like when like shit really hits the fan, nobody knows what to do or has any sort of like yeah. plan. Maybe it's been dormant or it hasn't happened in like a hundred years or fifty years or something. That's why all these new generations don't know, but <sighs> some of the, the elder women do. <laughs> I don't know, but there's like some of the rules: don't use electric lights, don't stay close to animals, don't take anything that was close to them, don't hurt them. Never call evil by its name. Don't shoot them with firearms. And even more important, don't be afraid of dying. Hmm. Hmm. Sure. I'll get right on that. You got it. <laughs> Deal. I just watched this lady get like destroyed by this car. I'll be fine. I'm not afraid at all. <laughs> but I still don't see how, like, so you've got the two brothers who are out hunting with the dog and they find the the half body of the cleaner and the dog's sniffing around. Eventually, when we get to the other house and the dog eats the face off or kills that little girl, the dog had been possessed, but Pedro took off all his clothes and he burned them so he wouldn't be possessed. But the dog got possessed at some point in the like whole thing. Like sniffing his pants. Yeah. Seemingly. But then he, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, because he sniffed him in the house and he took yeah. off and he burned him so he never, he theoretically doesn't appear to be possessed. Some of these people are possessed and not even possessed. But then the older brother, he's in the car, like he seems like he's possessed. And then the younger brother who had the gun, he ends up possessed in the end. But why aren't the two older brothers, the two main brothers, why aren't they when they've gone through, been in all of these areas? Myrta has a line later where she wonders if the demon wants her and then Jaime's like, but then why would it like go through us to get to you? And she says, because you guys are the ones who are scared. So I think Pedro and Jaime are dumb enough to keep trying to get away, which can spread it. Because if they'd never gone to um, Sabrina's house, that wouldn't have happened. If so they had never gone to get the, the grandma, that never would have. You know what I mean? Spreading so, the fear. I, I feel like, like he that. has some line about that, too, where he's like, I could, this would have never happened if I hadn't gone there or something it's like, like that. Yeah, yeah you're no right. Shit, oh, <laughs> yeah, for the kid getting you, killed. Yeah. Basically His killed wife, family, yeah. bro. Which okay. sucks because he was trying to save them. But yeah. Okay, that's Dude awful. hubris. Yeah, I am man. I can fight anyone I'll and win. I'll fix everything. I will, I will save family <laughs> without instructions or directions. I'll just go get the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> we meet Mirta, Jaime's friend, who might be able to help them. And Sabrina returns and takes Santino with her. Sad. And then she eats him. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a bucket of popcorn at like the a bag theater. of popcorn exactly it, it, i couldn't figure out what i was seeing at first she's nibbling on his brains on yeah his head. it's like the, when we finally get that second look at it it's like she pulls out like a huge string of something yeah. and oh. i like the sound effect of it too because she's walking down the street and she kind of has a zombie like walk as she's limping along and uh. he's trying to drive them with the car with the lights off and on then you see you know you're going to see her and then there she is like limping along and then you think she's just carrying the kid and then she's you really she's eating the kid and then eventually like when she climbs on the car and you see all the blood everywhere after he smashes into a tree to try to 
kill her why she's already you can't you can't kill her <laughs> we already watched her yeah. get smushed by a she's car. already been killed <laughs> yeah didn't work and, and now so, you have one less vehicle <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> you happy <laughs> but there's all that that red blood smear that you see you see that repeated a few times in the movie um on vehicles so I again I love that gore and that slush and that just brains falling out even though it was a you know a, a seven year old. So I did like the kind of novel idea about the demon getting trapped in the son's body. Yep, that was it was an interesting twist that I hadn't. It's probably been in a lot of other I horror. I feel movies. like I've heard of that before, but I can't remember what. Yeah. Was that son's name J- Jair? Jair. Jair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I go back and forth on that because at first I was like, I, I think it's kind of interesting that um, Mirta's like, uh, that kid's possessed. And everybody's like, no, 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 he's just autistic. It's like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he has like just as much ability to be possessed by a demon as anybody else. But, but then when they go to the car, though, you can see that his hands are like deformed in a way they weren't before. Right. They're kind of like contortioned to be like. Indifferent. Right. Yeah. Gam Gam points that out to us. <laughs> I just couldn't tell if it was like offensive or not. Like, yeah, I yeah. Could how, either. how, like, it, it, no one's brain is that complicated. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. autism is not like that mm-hmm. hard to figure out. <laughs> I, and I feel like, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just going to preface it with that. But I feel like you wouldn't see this in an American movie necessarily mm-hmm. because we might be a little bit more cognizant of being like, sensitive about it yeah Mm -hmm. possibly i i wondered about that too because i i I was surprised that that was a a feature of the plot that was pointed out Mm -hmm. really clearly and it it yeah i wondered if it would if it's like if it's offensive or not but by the but honestly by the time you're this far into the movie (laughs) if you've seen (laughs) a little girl being mauled by a dog like it's it's like well i guess it's not really that offensive compared to everything else i've seen because he's yeah he's not the first kid who's been brutalized in this kid yeah well and eventually towards the end like he appears to be not autistic and he's like when, before he kills the grandma and i'm like oh maybe he was just like possessed and he wasn't autistic this whole time what and then <laughs> for half a second he comes in and he's like i'm hungry give me some food grandma and then yeah well, that's, and then eventually, towards the end, he's back to being how he was before. My read of that was that he was like fully possessed at that. At point. that point, like, yeah, it's like yeah. it, had, it had like figured out the maze of his brain mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So the car was him like transforming, but, but I thought that was a cool scene. Yeah, Kojair fighting hard, trying to get, <laughs> trying to fight against a demon. Got to eat that brooch that Grandma's wearing. Got to eat that apple ice cream at the end. <laughs> Got to eat Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then when he's, like, coughing it up. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I loved it so much. Gross. (laughs) Speaking of grandma, dude, this is not the time to be taking your sleeping pills. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, you don't, need a, you don't need to get, get a good night's sleep. What She's like, I'm a little groggy. I can't tell if you're fucking dead, Sabrina. Yeah. I'm like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> she just comes downstairs. She's like, I'm scared. Something weird Something's is going, going on upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything about it. So you do pill. it. I can't tell. I took my little pill. <laughs> Right, so eventually they make their way back to the school. They figure out that they need to go to the schoolhouse. Oh, before we go there, at Mirta's house. We also learn here that uh, Pedro tried to kill his kids. When was it? Oh, that's why he had a restraining order. Um, yeah, that's why he has a restraining order because she mentions it when uh, Sabrina calls. Like after <sighs> she dies, Sabrina calls and she's like, "You tried to, like, you gave me a quote broken son, and you tried to like kill them." And then Mirta asks later. Um, if this is the brother that, like, turned off the, like, plugged the exhaust or something like that. It oh, was really? that heater in his room because they showed it for, like, a second. It's like, and I couldn't figure out why. It's like he's standing in the room and he looks over at it and they really linger on it. Mm. And it's like he, he like, tried to sabotage that to kill them. And I think himself. Yeah, I think that all was the deal. Oh, yeah. I missed all oh, of that. Yeah. Well, because it, it flies past, which. I still never knew why he had the restraining order other than, was, like, being absent. Yeah, I was confused oh. because then the brother says, oh, no, Sabrina just makes up a load of crap, right? Mm-hmm. But, right, but there, is, but there is a really specific moment right. where he looks over at it and you see it. And I was like, that is a wall heater. And that's all <laughs> That's all it registered <laughs> to me as. Yeah, so. yeah they <laughs> would go to all oh, the man. trouble if he was just making this story up. Yeah. Or if she was just making it up, right? Right. Okay. 
And this is also the part where we hear from Myrta about her backstory, about how she and her husband were a shepherd and they had a church, but they were frauds until like a possessed one came and just totally destroyed everybody. Ruined everything. Yeah, these freaking <laughs> Like they do. <laughs> the, the story was interesting, but it started to kind of fall apart for me at some point, halfway through the motivation and what finally happened. I think I missed that the explanation a little bit it is confusing i I think the only like the story is like they cleaned for 12 years and but like people are attacking cleaners now so her husband went out for a cleaning and didn't come back because people were fighting back to preserve their faith that's the message i was getting that normal non-rotten people were attacking the cleaners to mm-hmm. preserve the church. I don't know if it was for the church or not, but even like the cleaner we saw at the beginning was killed by Yeah, the demon. I right. Yeah. So where was that demon? It was the kids, right? That was what it was implied. It like, was Uriel's brother, yeah. Yeah. It was Uriel's brother, that little boy. The yeah. One, the one with that the killed gun. the cleaner at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. The gunshots at the beginning. But how did he get sawn in two? He's not. He killed that cleaner. He that was the gunshot. Yeah, but how did the cleaner get, get cut in half? You're right. That kid cut him in half, I think, and then ate part of him. And yeah. Then also ate somebody else. That innocent little boy. The, Uriel's little brother with the gun. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Every kid either gets like manipulated, possessed. Like every single kid in this is like. Yeah. Okay, I. Did you guys all pick this up? It's right at the in end. Like a, in like a weird, yeah, it's... it's. You probably got it. At the end, when um, one of the brothers goes into like the outshed, he sees the younger brother up there, um, and he has the gun, and he says that... He it's talks, like he quickly he said, explains a couple of hiding. things. And he okay. says that he, yeah. he killed the cleaner. It was all his fault. I killed the cleaner. I'm the one who cut him in half. Um, and then, And then he also says something about how... The same thing that's happening to your mom that happened to your mm-hmm. mom, and then when you go in the house, that's when you see the kid eating ice cream and coughing up the hair right, of the right. grandma. Okay. So the boy admits that, "Hey, I did that, and now it's happening." <clears throat> this, yeah, this. Okay. Because they thank you. Eat them. I don't know. The, yeah. the second and third act of this movie are really murky, mm-hmm. and it is when they get to the cleaner lady's house this is where the movie this is actually where i think it slowed down yes absolutely almost to a halt Mm -hmm. until they get to the school Mm -hmm. i love the school part the school part was pretty wild um (laughs) and uh but and see as we're as we're saying what happened to that cleaner and who cut him in half i'm now questioning because i was under the impression it was like the children of the corn kids in the school or something not necessarily oh. the kid in the loft with the gun what's his name uriel is he it said it was his fault the brother? didn't he say um, he killed the cleaner i don't know what uriel's brother is uriel's brother says that he killed the cleaner and his mom maria elena and then ate her um, and he says that there was a voice in his head that made him do it. Yeah. Okay. And it's interesting. I have a note here, just because we're already here. Um, right at the beginning of the movie, Jaime thinks that somebody fed the body to the pigs. And I think there's a line about Oh, he him says doing that. that. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yep. But it's funny because Jaime's like on it right at the beginning. He's like, you know, someone like fed the body to the pig. Like, oh, there's the gun right there. You know what I mean? But yeah. then nobody. Yeah. <laughs> goes along an hour and a half later, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but yeah, the, the the details of this movie get a little bit murky, but... It also doesn't really matter. Yeah, like that's, as a that's mo- it, as just As an intelligent movie goer, you want to learn the rules and kind of figure out, oh, who's going to... But you find out the little piece, you're like, oh, that makes sense, that's cool. But it doesn't really matter because the movie is still sort of like... Not ethereal, but it's just sort of like exists... It matters to me because when this comes to our town, I want to be damn sure I know exactly what to do. I'm staying the fuck away from everybody. (laughs) Turn the lights off. (laughs) I tell you one thing: I'm not going to stop and take a nap at any point. I'm just going to go right, like right to Florida. I don't care. Well, your dog is so small; it'll take a long time before it eats you. (laughs) (laughs) That's where this is going to happen in America. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Yeah. All right. 
Jair comes inside and he asks his grandma for tea. Um, Myrta and Pedro find a bunch of kids and Uriel at a school. Myrta tries to guide Pedro as to how to kill Uriel, but he is manipulated by the kids uh, who kill Myrta and Pedro kills Uriel, which causes evil to be reborn. Which is a little kid covered in blood. A little red boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he crawls out. And runs his fingers across your face. And permanently marks you. <laughs> like like Wilson yeah. and Castaway. I love those. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I thought you were going to say Cain and Abel. <laughs> no. No, you know, I thought of Castaway. The classic tale. <laughs> nope. Not me. <laughs> That's, but it does look exactly like Wilson. It does, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just watched that recently, and I can concur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I loved the school with the kids. They were so creepy, and you were kind of like, "Ah, oh, you're not. You don't want to trust them, but they're really good at lying." And they kept wanting to like listen to the kids, and the grandma's like, "No, no, they're lying." Or the woman, she's like, "No, they're lying. Don't trust them." Right. But your instinct. I think is usually to mm-hmm. trust children if they're telling you something because they don't have a reason to lie yeah. necessarily, mm-hmm. but these fuckers do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, then there's that white lie. You can smell it in the classroom. There's that white lie. Their mouths are kind of there's blood. They look kind of a lot of them. Look they look compromised. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> They got real dusty shoes. And, yeah. shit. <laughs> and then when they dig under like the stage and like, and they're in there at night. Sorry, it's like that. That should have been a, that should have been a, a big red flag to me. It's just like the kids are all alone at school at night, and only one of them will talk to them. <laughs> well, and and then when they start digging up the stage and they find the other adults and they start pulling their bodies up because one of them is still. You can just smell all of that. It's like, oh, she's still alive. And then they keep digging it up and digging it up, and then they find um, Uriel, the rotten guy. At this point yeah. in his... Then they're like, pull him up. You couldn't get him out of the house and into the car. How are you going to pull him up out <laughs> no. of under the, the this stage? Alone. Yeah. No, it's like... <sighs> I'm like, he still is a really big person, and yeah. he's rotten and dead. I can't even imagine what <laughs> like putting your bare hand on him would feel like. Ugh. Um, and like with everything that has transpired at this point in this movie... Why would you think, like, I'm going to reach down in there? Oh, God, no. These guys are definitely dead. Nothing is going to happen with them. Yeah. Um, ultimately, that's you. not the real problem. But It's going to be smushy and mushy. Very. Remind me again what the plan was. Go to the school, find Uriel, and... Clean him. Time to astrolabe this bee. Right. <laughs> Point the, the little telescope thing at him or exactly. something. Whatever. We never get to see how it actually functions. Yeah. Right. Because it's used hilariously (laughs) after this Um, but here is where he comes in and is like grandma I'm hungry let's get with it I need a snack I would like a lunchable (laughs) this whole thing has been stressful I really need a Capri Sun (laughs) or a nut or butter (laughs) yeah and then his snack is eating his grandmother yeah killer snack honestly Mm. There's a lot there. Broach and all. <laughs> I wonder if he got a little sleepy afterward because she took her pills. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't address that. Were there deleted scenes? No. no there were no special none. features on the desk. The <laughs> only special features are um, they do have photos of like um, Ruiz's wife, like her head uh, prosthetic. Cool. Ooh, yeah, stuff neat. like that. God, all the prosthetic work in this movie. I know I said it earlier, but it really looks great. It's really cool. And it reminds me that it's just like, these movies are so much better when they take the time to do that shit instead mm-hmm. of doing it all CGI. There's obviously some moments of CGI in this, but like the they're pretty few and far between. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it just... it. I mean, I'm able to say that this movie's gross and that it makes me feel bad because that stuff all looks tactile and... Ugh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> bubbly. Something you um said earlier about how this would never like be made in the US. Well, yeah, none of this is going to make it because it will never get past the censors. You know what I mean? If they yeah. released this in theaters it'd be like X. Yeah. Um but that's uh one of the few <laughs> positives about streaming is like you can slap it up on Shutter and it's going to 
It seems like there's well. a lot of like hyper violent stuff like this on Shutter, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen a lot of it, but like I I see like stills and stuff of like really gross makeup effects like this, and it makes me very happy that it exists. Yeah, I mean it's not for the the faint of heart though. I mean you've got like gore on adults, humans, animals. My mother would hate this movie. <laughs> I mean this movie is, is this is for people who like horror movies and want. And those who like blood and guts and go- heavy gore, and don't mind watching a dog dying, yeah, that I'd, or a goat. I'm not crazy about that. I understand I mean, why. I it don't had like to that either. But but he was a big beef, and I liked his his big face. And then he got really mean. Roger is so freaking cute before he gets possessed. He's just a He's big like beef. smiling. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to know what kind of dog that is. Uh, I mean, a cutie. So it looked like a like a cane corso mix of some yeah. sort. Anyway, huge, awesome. Family protector. Love it. Big boy. Good boy. I'm going to look up Roger, the dog actor. <laughs> I'm see. Until he eats you. See if he has any other credits. <laughs> He's not listed on the cast Damn it. list. Well, that sucks. <laughs> that means he didn't get paid. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did like, though, if we go back to the school, um, when evil is born, like whatever was happening to Uriel comes to, after a year, it comes to... I had. I guess he was he was murdered. He wasn't cleaned. He was stabbed by one of the. I guess one of the things that Mercha brought, like, was the thing that he whacked, that the Pedro whacked Uriel in the head with, and then he died, and then that's when the kid, this evil, this an evil entity, was then born and crawled out of him. Yeah, I don't think that was like the prescribed protocol for no. uh, cleaning. Because <laughs> he he was still able to like, kill him. <clears throat> yeah, but. Like, I think you have to, like, kill him a certain way for it to stop the thing. And he just, like, broed out. And... But you were able to still, he was still be able to kill him, and then the thing was able to be born? Well, I think anything can kill him. But if you don't do it right, then that red fucker's going to just, like, and wander the countryside. And then the kids just walk, hold hands, or just walking down. Very creepy. I love. I I like some creepy kids, especially in mass. You can just tell, like, whoa. Don't want to, you know, find those kids uh, anywhere. Yeah. There's one shot where it shows all I think five kids standing in a doorway, and then the little red guy comes out, and then it goes back to them, and they're all smiling, and they have these like terrible like uh, smile smiles. That's See, lovely. I don't like Uriel's head coming up through the stage he like sits up or something and he looks like, like a little whack-a-mole yeah. <laughs> well i immediately thought of uh uh apocalypse now like yeah, the, oh he does look like kurtz you're right exactly that's all i could think of wow yeah i've never seen that oh you know anyway that's a whole other story but <laughs> yeah that movie's great and i just i just espoused these values to lauren and she ended up staying up three extra hours to watch that movie alone. Wow. And she loved it. Um, yeah, Apocalypse Now is great. We've talked about all kinds of movies today. <laughs> well, so what happens? He's kind of a golden boy in the end of that movie. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking of Apocalypse Now. <laughs> yeah, so you're not a fan of Uriel coming up, popping out. No, because this whole time he's like, Doesn't he's like a Teletubby. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he can't move. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's fine. He can sit up, like, of his own volition. Yeah. Ugh. Well, once Gross. you get the bodies off him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the entity was about to be birthed out of him, and that's what gave him an extra bit of mobility. Yeah. He's, he got that, like, uh, uh, fuck. When you, when you hear about moms who can, like, lift a car because their kid's trapped underneath. Adrenaline. That, like, adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. The Hulk. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's something here about, like, kids... Because the whole way that the evil is, like, birthed, like, it needs a body to, like, use before it can come out. Like, that and all of the, like, evil kid stuff, there's something here that I'm, like, not quite getting. But I think that makes this movie kind of fun because I've watched it a bazillion times. There's always something, like, a little bit different to think about or that I missed. Um, Like, there's, like, one line that's an insinuation that um, Jaime and... Sabrina had a thing. Oh, like when she sm- when he smashes her against the tree the second time. Yeah, she's like, I thought you loved me. She said, like, you told me once that you were in love with me or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think the subtitles kind of suck. So Sabrina or Merta? 
Sabrina. Sabrina. So he had a thing with Sabrina and Myrta. Right. We're uh, like we're just very briefly suggested. Yeah, there's just a bunch of like little lines where it's like, was that like a weird translation, or is there like some little hint here that I'm not quite getting? Right. All right. Pedro returns to Myrta's house, and he, Jaime, and Jair return home. Jaime finds Uriel's brother, who admits to killing Marina Elena and the cleaner, and then eating them both. Jair chokes on his apple ice cream and then spits up remnants of his grandma. <laughs> Pedro goes outside and screams. The end. <laughs> yeah, the end. <laughs> the apple ice cream looks pretty good. It does. It does. I'm curious how apple it is. <laughs> it's interesting because the very end, like when he goes outside and screams, like there's no change. Nothing is over. Everything is 100 times worse and they're all just going to die. Mm-hmm. And there's just this sense of like dread and desolation. And they just did all of that work for nothing. They could have been at home eating apple ice cream, playing board games the whole time. Yep. The, instead, they're running around trying to kill people that are already dead. <laughs> and that little demon boy is out. He's, yeah. Well, and he would have got. Who knows where he went? Why didn't they just drive yeah. far away? Why didn't they just drive? They were trying to, I know they were trying to like end it and kill, get rid of the, the rotten, but. At some point, they could have all just gotten in the car and driven, like, far, 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 far away. I don't know. They wanted to be heroes. It's a mistake. Don't try to be a Moral hero. Moral of the story, don't be a hero. Anyways, it was gross. Good time. Oh, crap. Christopher. Oh, it's it's here. Okay. Right. When he looks over at, when Jair looks over at Pedro for just a split second to see yes. what his reaction is to the mm-hmm. hair. Yeah. Man, yeah. it's, it's too good. It is too good. I watched it a few times because I just wanted to experience it over and over again. Yeah. That actor is really good, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know a thing about it. I don't recognize really any of these actors other than Jaime. But yeah, that one, that scene really got me. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. Was there another point in the movie where Jair looked somewhere that you wouldn't have expected him to look? Like in the car? He watches when Sabrina dies. Mm. And Santino doesn't see it, but he's definitely like looking right at it. But does he move his eyes like in a way that you wouldn't expect him to? I'm not sure. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of the end scene. Like they definitely show a close up of just him in the back, like right when uh, Sabrina gets smashed the first time. Okay. Like it's very purposeful to show that he knows that that happened. Um, also, Jair's choking is so freaky. Uh, the whole thing just like grosses yeah. me out. And then like the the blood and the hair and the necklace, just like oh. a lot of blood. I mean, yeah. and Pedro's really reaching back there. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to pull it out. Oh my god! Well, he just thinks he's choking on ice cream or something. Yeah, <laughs> gonna grab that ice cream from the back. <laughs> Woof! <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. Uh, yeah, it looks real though. I mean, that's a giant giant hairball. Mm-hmm. From grandma, not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like the end. I like that he just goes outside and like screams and that's it. That's yeah. all we get. I yeah. It's this movie is very nihilistic and I almost respect that. I uh, when he went outside I went, There's no fucking way this can be the end of the movie. <laughs> And then that it is, it's like it almost makes you mad, but I kind of respect that it held on to its tone. It didn't try to make it, Mm -hmm. it didn't try to tighten everything up for you at the end or make it happy or even even conclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Because what could you have done? But also as he was outside. Show me where the red boy went. (laughs) (laughs) No. But also as like he is outside and he just screams and it ends, I was just like, what? That's it? I'm like, oh, yay, that's it. Yeah. I could also picture like myself in a movie theater with other people watching in this for the first time. And then when he goes outside and screams and then it like cuts to black and you're just like, what? You could hear something. I could just hear the collective like, come on. Yeah. (laughs) Like in a fun way. That's right. Yeah. See, that's where I think this movie shines. One of its ways is it's constantly surprising Mm -hmm, you, right? mm -hmm. Like, many, many times I was just so surprised in this movie. And with all the movies we've seen through our lives, you know, to be surprised ever once in a movie, that's fantastic. Extremely rare. You know, but this had a lot of surprises for me. And it doesn't pander. It 
doesn't spell mm-hmm. things out very clearly. I mean, we've we have all had about a thousand questions of each other related <laughs> to this movie, and like, depending on the, how successful your movie is, that can be a really big problem. I don't think it's a problem for this. Like, I I think that the fact that there are so many discussion points in it speak to it being good, and that that stuff worked mm-hmm. and landed for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, I was super surprised by this one. I was surprised that a Shutter movie was actually like quality. <laughs> there's a lot of stinkers on there, <laughs> and that's like an—I feel bad, but that's like an assumption that I've made about Shutter. So I usually just if I see that it's a Shutter movie, I think that was maybe part of what made me pump the brakes the first time I tried to watch this. I was like, it's Shutter; it can't be good. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything to back that up. It's but. tough because like. Shutter is doing the like A24 or like Netflix thing where like they didn't produce this, they just snatched it up for distribution. Yeah. So it's hard to tell. It's like this rocks because some guy in Argentina made it and made it well and then was able to distribute it worldwide through Shutter. Yeah. Um but yeah, there are some like made for Shutter movies on there that are not uh my cup of tea. Sure. Not up to my standards. Sure. <laughs> well, it seems like a lot of the stuff that I hear about in there is kind of like goofy. Mm-hmm. Like A24 horror movies all have like a similar vibe. It's like that, but they don't really get the why. So it's like they'll hit some of the same beats, but there's no like backbone story to like make it make sense. Yeah. That's my overall impression. This is also a big step up from his last movie, Terrified, which again, I think has two like really well done scenes, but the rest of it is like confusing and like boring Hmm. i would say like it just i don't know it doesn't it doesn't hold up on a second watch the way that this does where you can watch it a bazillion times and still like enjoy it i feel like i would be hard pressed to want to sit down and watch this movie again at least right now (laughs) (laughs) so yeah that was when evil lurks any last thoughts before we read it I'm ready. Let's vote. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always make fun of you, but it's so funny. <laughs> Let's get to voting. <laughs> we're, we're voting. All right. I'll go first. Um, not my favorite movie we've watched for this podcast. Um, I, <laughs> that's and that's it. A big thumbs down. This has been what scares us. <laughs> <laughs> But so it's not something I'm going to be drawn to to watch repeatedly or I might say after hearing what Allison just said, I might for somebody who has Shudder and is looking for movies to watch, it's like, hey, I watched this. It wasn't total trash. Um, I've heard that that's in comparison to other things, that it's a good movie. Um, it is well done. It's really nicely shot. The acting is good. I was not into the story. I wasn't really connecting with the characters. Um, but what kept me not hating it was the blood and the gore it was very nasty and very gory which i really enjoy that was i don't want to say it was a breath of fresh air but it was very visceral and gross and you could smell the movie you could just see it you could hear the it gushing and it was just and it was also original it was a new take on a possession i kind of like that i could still watch the movie and follow it and not quite know all the rules and how everything played in um it was fine uh so i guess for Overall, I guess I'll give it a four out of ten. Okay. Um, and then I wasn't particularly sc- afraid of it. Um, to put a rating on the scarometer, um, but there were a couple little jump scares, like the first time we see people getting murdered, and I was like, oh, okay, 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 this is going to be good. But I can see this is scary, and I think the gore factor kind of kicks it up a couple notches just because it's so gruesome and icky. Um, and you are kind of like cringing as you're watching it, even though it's not scary, but also it's like a possession thing and you don't quite know the rules. So this could be outside your front door at any moment. You just never know whether you're in Ann Arbor or Argentina. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll give it a, uh, let's go to two out of five for the scarometer. Mm-hmm. Well, I did really like this movie. There were some really original parts to it. Uh, I liked how sad and depressing it was. Um, it was shocking in a lot of parts. And I liked the kind of original backstory, like Amanda mentioned. 
the end, I f- by the by the end, I felt like it was a little bit of a hodgepodge of we've got evil kids, we've got possession, we've got some kind of made up thing, you know. So I felt a little bit like we were checking off a bunch of boxes to get to some horror tropes. That's all pretty much okay because I didn't really mind with all the the, the shocking new stuff that we saw in this movie. So I'm going to give it a three out of five on the horror rating. Uh, Wait a minute. The horror is... Oh, it means Scaramator. Scaramator, okay. yeah. I you better it. get the name of our no, strange no, no. thing right. Oh, no, I got it. I cha- <laughs> I just now changed the name of it to, to the my horror rating. personal Ooh. horror rating. <laughs> <laughs> we have three things now. But so right. you get your own. I get my own All right, because I'm, I'm make the golden my own boy. Too. <laughs> just as it should be. Right. <laughs> and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Nice. Uh, I liked this movie. I am a little surprised at how much I like this movie. Um, it's not something that I could just put on any time. You know, which I would say that something that fits in that category is something like The Fog or Halloween or The Thing, which of course are all John Carpenter movies. Uh, <laughs> we got your number. <laughs> but, you know, like there are, there are certain horror movies that... I can just put on there like a um, regardless of what time it is. This movie, no, this like <laughs> like if I was in a terrible mood, this movie would not sit very well with me. Um, that said, I think that's one of its strengths. This movie's so dark and mm-hmm. so gross, and it's this movie is goopy and uncomfortable and un. It's very unpleasant, but it looks so good and it's so competently made. And even if there are hanging questions from it, I don't like I'm okay with them in a way that I I I can't explain it, but I'm willing to give this movie a lot more leeway than other movies like it. Um just because it's it's just well done and I I I I have to admire that it that it just goes for such a hateful ending. (laughs) Um, I I would give it a I'm gonna say seven out of ten overall. Scarometer Man, I – it's not even – it's hard for me to, to be scared of things like this because I'm just – I'm just a nah, – I'm just not a believer in anything like this in mm-hmm. woo-woo shit. And so <laughs> so to me, like – but I think the idea of a, a, a rotted is pretty awful. And the idea – I think in the moment if I was one of those guys and it was my job to pick up one side of that fucking sheet – I'd be pretty scared. I would not want to do that. Um, and the effects are so good in it um, that I, I, I'm going to say three out of five, just because I think that 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 the gore effects in it are so effective that it it makes it scary. Oh my god! Even the, and the dog attack, that's a nightmare. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a nightmare as a dog owner like if your dog did that, that's a nightmare. If you're in the room and you saw another dog do that to somebody else, like. Yeah, yeah, three out of five. For nice. That. Yeah, yeah. Little Santino's like, uh, guys, uh, my sister's over. Let's here. talk about the fact that they d- nobody heard that happening. Yeah. That would be loud and terrible. But anyway, yeah, I think this movie rocks. I don't think it's perfect, but um, it's such a step up from his previous work. I think it's really well made. There are certain shots, like when the camera kind of comes from behind the car wraps around to see Jaime when he's driving by Sabrina eating that kid. And then it, like, goes to the front of the car. So smooth and just, like, really visually interesting. Um, And, like I said in the first episode, I love a sad horror movie. I love a bleak-ass horror movie. There's no future for any of these people, any of the characters, or anyone else on Earth if all kids are, like, possessed or, like, dead um, and I like that they're like it's pretty original. There's new rules. Like, I just I think it's really interesting and unique, which I'm always looking for because <laughs> I've logged like just under 500 horror movies on Letterboxd. I'm looking for anything new. <laughs> wow. And this is that for me. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten on my personal I like it scale. <laughs> there we go. Everybody gets their own scale. <laughs> and then. I, 
I'm going to give this a three out of five. There's so many shocking moments. I don't really feel scared by anything in this movie, but um, in terms of horror movies, this is definitely like mm-hmm. up there when it comes to scares. I just I'm too desensitized to really be afraid of anything anymore. But three out of five is a respectable number for this movie. That's so a high I'll go number for, yeah, for sure. This. And even looking at some of the other movies we watched and how we ranked them as far as horror and scare, this one's definitely across the board for all of us a little bit higher collectively than some of the other things. Definitely. I it, it makes time. me really excited to see whatever he's going to do next, mm-hmm. the filmmaker. Um, yeah, if like if if he's given a bigger budget and i would just love to see what he does next and it's funny because this movie it it seems like it would it's like a low budget premise but it it was shot in a high budget quality it's Mm -hmm. so well done Mm -hmm. like there aren't any like throwaways or i don't know what i would change in it you know it's very effective in what it is and it looks great like the cinematography the shots like there's no like there's no throwaways there's just not well, if you like what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. What Scares Us.